To compare integers, we're going to plot points on the number line. The numbers farther to the right are greater, and the numbers farther to the left are smaller. For example, I can plot and find compare 9 to 3. I can compare 3 to 0 or negative 4. I can use any point on the number line. I can plot it and see that to the right would be greater and numbers farther to the left are going to be smaller. It's just depending on which two numbers we want to look at. An integer can be equal to, less than, or greater than any other integer. The symbols we use are equals, less than, and greater than. For example, 4 is equal to 4, or 4 equals 4. 4 is less than 6, and 4 is greater than 2. When using less than or greater than, remember that the smaller side points at the smaller number, the number that is less, right? You can use a device making it look like Pac-Man or an alligator I've seen. Here's Pac-Man. He's usually eating the bigger number for greater than or he's pointing towards the smaller number I've seen alligators where they're eating the numbers whatever you need to use to remember that less than is pointing towards the smaller number then when we look at the number line we have to first mark the numerals and the numbers so we're going to place the number tiles in the correct places on the number line when doing this it's always best to start off with zero since zero is often our reference point and zero will always go directly in the center of our number line. We're then going to work with the positive numbers and place them to the right since positive numbers are to the right of zero. Right, all positive numbers are to the right and all negative numbers would be to the left. So I'm first going to go right in order from zero would then be one then two, then three, then four, then five, right? Uh, they're all positive to the right of zero, and the more to the right I go, the greater the number becomes, the, and closer to zero, the smaller or lesser the number becomes. Now as we place our negative numbers, we again start at zero and think only one distance away would give me a negative one, then a negative two, negative three, negative four, and then negative five. Now here, the farther from zero to the left, the farther left we go, the smaller or the lesser the number becomes. Kind of the opposite with the positive numbers. And that completes our number line. The greater the absolute value of a negative integer, the lesser the integer. That's because it is farther from zero but in the negative direction. So we can look and use the number line to show that this is true. We can have and use negative 4. If I place negative 4 is equal to negative 4, so I place it on the same point on the number line. We have negative 4 is greater than negative 6. So we can see that negative 6 is farther to the left than negative 4, or, ne or rather negative 4 is farther to the right, making it greater than negative 6. And the greater the absolute value, the lesser the integer. So if we take the absolute value of each, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So this has a greater absolute value and negative 6 is lesser than negative 4 or smaller. Same thing here with negative 4 is less than negative 2. 
Again, negative 4 is to the left on the number line, making it smaller, but also the absolute value, again, of negative 4 is 4, and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So the greater the absolute value of the negative 4 was 4, it has a greater absolute value, making that the smaller integer this time. One way or another th way of thinking about this is in terms of money. You'd rather have $20 than $10, but you'd rather owe someone $10 than $20. Think about it. You wouldn't want to give, you would always want to owe less money. So owing money can be thought of as a negative amount of money, right? Owing someone $10 would be negative 10 versus owing someone $20 would be a negative 20. And you would always want to have a smaller amount to owe someone. So that can be thought of as a negative amount of money since you need to get that much money back just to get to zero. You always want to break even with your money. You don't want to owe someone any money. So you go back to zero dollars. And now we can drag the inequality symbol between the pairs. So we're looking at less than or greater than. And it's all about, again, when working with negative numbers, the absolute value is negative 3 is what to 5? Negative 3 is less than 5. 63 is what to 36? 63 is greater than 36. Negative 6 is what to negative 3? Negative 6 is less than negative 3. Negative 6 has a higher absolute value than negative 3. Negative 24 is what to negative 17? Negative 24 is less than negative 17. Again, it has a higher absolute value than negative 17. 8 is what to negative 8? 8 is greater than negative 8. A positive number is always greater than a negative number. Negative 237 is what to negative 259? Negative 237 is greater than negative 259. Again, its absolute value is smaller than negative 259. Negative 10 is what to negative 15? Negative 10 is greater than then negative 15, again, its absolute value is smaller. 127 is what to 172? 127 is less than 172. It's a smaller number. Both are positive. Negative 2 is what to negative 8? Negative 2 is greater than negative 8. Negative 2 has a smaller absolute value. And negative 10 is what to negative 7? Negative 10 is less than negative 7. Negative 10 has a larger absolute value. When comparing all integers, we can make some generalizations. If we look at our number line and we place 0 in the middle, we know that to the right would be our positive numbers and to the left would be our negative numbers. So any positive number is greater than zero and negative numbers. We can see that zero and positive numbers are to the right of all the negative numbers. And any negative number is less than zero and any positive number. We can see that the negative numbers are all to the left of zero and the positive numbers. We can generalize when we look at numbers instead of having to keep Looking at location, we can just look at the sign or if it's zero itself. The thermometer can be thought of as a vertical number line. Positive numbers are always above zero and negative numbers are always below zero. So here is an example of a thermometer. If we locate zero, we can see two different actual units. Here with degrees Celsius, here would be zero. And we can create a vertical number line. And here, the positive numbers would be above zero and the negative numbers would be below zero. 
we can also look at the side of Fahrenheit. Here, zero has its reference point here. And again, we can create a number line above and below it where all the positive numbers would be above and all the negative numbers would be below. So when you're measuring temperature, you can see if you're in a positive temperature or a negative temperature. If your temperature is really hot, the higher you go on your thermometer, or really, really cold as you go with your thermometer. Now take a minute and ask yourself, why is it helpful to use a thermometer to represent integers instead of just a regular number line? What can a thermometer show us that a different tool would not? And are there any limitations using the thermometer? These are important questions we have to ask ourselves when working with this tool.